Fellas, first and foremost, I want to start this interview off with a thank you. I thank you for your support of the show for such a long time and just being really, really awesome humans, man. Thank you, gentlemen. I, I much appreciate it. Uh, I'm excited to talk about the new recordings, uh, everything that is Remy Grasso. But first, gentlemen, can you please introduce yourself properly? Let me know where in the bouts in the world you are right now. Plug or promote anything you'd like. My, my co-host, by the way, is in the bathroom. Who'll be right back. Well, we have Remy Grasso with um, Riley, and then this is Billy, the bass player. Uh, Josh isn't here right now. He's actually a bit hungover. He's hungover? So it's just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Birthday boy. Yeah, it's his birthday. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Let's. Can he hear us right now, or is he off camera? Or is he just not where you are? Um, he's watching the stream at home, so he's okay. not here today. He's let's make- let's give a big shout out to Josh for his birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hell yeah. Happy birthday. Please give some happy birthdays in the chat for him. That's awesome. Gentlemen, clearly you are stoners. Are we doing indica, sativa, hybrid? What's your preference? We, we don't really have that sort of option <laughs> over here, right? It's still not legalized, so you kind of take what you get. I got you. Yeah. Hell yeah. Whatever it, gets your stone, man. <laughs> and it looks like the bong has got some decent use out of it in, in its day, so it's always good to see. Yeah. Hell yeah. So tell me about tell me about the, the new recording. So we've been playing the, the demos for a long time, and we jumped in the other day to play When I Die, and I was like, wait a second, this sounds completely different. First, who did the new recordings as far as did the production, blah, 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 and... Um, what can we, I know we had a new music video about a month ago. What what else can we expect in the near future? Well, um, well, this year we've been mainly just updating our music, and we went to a proper studio this time, and um, just a guy locally here, and uh, got it all done properly. And hopefully next year we're looking at um, I'm building a studio at my house currently, so should expect couple of EPs early next year, hopefully. So lots of new music. Singles. Yeah, we've got heaps of music ready to go. The goal is mainly to be able to record just at a, instead of spending money. We did spend a bit of money recording it. But, um, it's a new one professionally, which obviously we'd like to be able to just get that sound at our own places in our own studios. Hell yeah, that's cool. I mean, you gotta invest in your career to, I suppose, to be taken seriously. And you're just unless you're just naturally amazing at uh, production, which most people aren't. Uh, I do want to start off with with an old one to show people like how far you've come along since you've been we've been playing your music. So I'm gonna go with the live living room version of the dark, which is always one of my favorites because we can see you guys in action as far as like performance wise. Uh, so we're gonna start there. Of course, we got a bunch more questions for you. If you're enjoying it, guys, please hit the subscribe button. Metallic, welcome back. Metallic, Rumi, Rumi Grasso, Rumi Grasso, Metallic. Metallic, do you have a question for the fellows in Rumi Grasso? What, how, how do you guys like living out in Australia? <laughs> awesome, man. Like, we live on the coast up here, so, you know, we've got good weather all the time and which is, yeah, right. it's pretty crazy around where we live, so, um, definitely can't yeah. find me, it's good, yeah, the scene's good down in Brizzy, so, it's always good to see live bands down there, and there's good stuff coming out of here, but, there's, yeah. there, there's a really good music scene in pretty much all of Australia, from what I've heard over the years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, have yeah. you guys ever had a chance to, to leave Australia and go to another country? Not yet. Not yet, man. That's something we want to do, though. That'd be fun. That'd be sick. Hell yeah. One day. Where, of all the places in the world, what would be the coolest place for you guys to play a show? Japan, the States, Mexico. Where Where would you want to play? Let's say it's a 10,000-person sold-out crowd, but what country in particular are you playing that show at? Yeah, 
Yeah, it'd be pretty wild well down there. Yeah. Or Brazil. I think I'd <laughs> I think I'd be happy to go anywhere outside the country and play, man. That would be a dream come true. Hell yeah. It, it, what do you you guys don't call a, a bong a bong, right? It's called something else. I forget the terminology though. Um we call it Billy. A Billy, Billy yes, a Billy, that's right. I always forget. I'd never heard that until like a, a fairly not fairly recent, but a while back when we had a, we had somebody else on Australia and I was like a Billy. So is that anyway. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, well, let's go ahead and play uh, one of the newer ones so we can see how far the production has come along. But before we do, of course, gentlemen, you know we have some trivia always set up. If possible, did you, did you bring any hot sauce? Yeah, we got a bit. Awesome. Hell yeah, that'll work. To do to do the trivia, though, I need a, a movie or TV show that you've seen the most you've seen this movie or tv show so many times where if i ask you trivia on it you will not get stumped yeah man what are we saying i'll give you a second to uh, talk it over and it. think about it and i'm gonna play the newer version of when i die so do you so you, i assume you guys play fairly regularly around in your area for for gigs and stuff Is well that um we've been like this year with playing shows and stuff, mainly because um, because uh, we lost our last bass player earlier this year, so we we've been we took Bill on and um we've just mainly been just recording and just getting everything updated before we get too crazy with the shows yet. But next year we're planning going harder with it. So okay, next what year is going to be big. What is uh Los Muertos? Um, well, it's, it's the dead, you know, it's, it's like, just about, it's kind of a journey through like, dying, like an ego death and then a rebirth at the end of a EP. If you listen to it, start, finish. That's how I felt about it anyway. But yeah. Hell yeah. Can I see your, your snake ink right here? <laughs> I'm a big tattoo guy. I love to see people say, oh, man, that thing is pretty elaborate. Hell yeah. How many hours oh, is that? <laughs> Got the big one done first. So, How many hours was that? did that piece take? Um, yeah, six hours. Just one go, so they're Hell all yeah. done at once. Yeah. How come your guys' music, I couldn't find your guys' music on Spotify. Is there a reason? Um, it's, it's it was meant to actually come out a few days ago, but um, there's a bit of um, technical error with it. So uh, I think it's coming out on the twentieth, or uh, might be on um, Christmas. I can't remember. I'll, I'll keep it updated though. For sure. Is that so? That applies to all the streaming services like Apple Music, all that stuff. It's all they all had the technical error thing. Dang, that is annoying. Yeah, that's it. Hopefully it was not something on your guys' end, but uh, and it was something that they messed up on. In that in that situation, like, what if you're like a major artist and there's a technical error and you've been promoting? Like, there's got to be they got to like throw you something for free for that mistake. I would think. Oh, uh, we hope so. Uh, <laughs> we tried getting in, and there's you know like we're probably a bit too small to be heard from big companies like that, but. Um, yeah, there's nothing much we can do about it, at least. Mm. Yeah, it's just the waiting game at the moment. Well, when it's ready, we'll we'll share a couple times for you and, and keep playing the jams, of course. Obviously, uh, did you guys think of a the movie or TV show? The the movie, what's that? For the trivia, did you pick one for the trivia? Oh, um, uh, well, I was thinking Simpsons. Um, yes, yeah, you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got a I got a boatload of Simpsons trivia. Uh, Metallic, hit him with another question and give me a second to look up some trivia. So, what uh, what inspired you guys to get into doing music? Well, um, I just I grew up playing music and like being around musicians. Like pretty much my whole family's play at least one instrument. 
some extent. And um, I don't know, I just always loved watching like music videos and watching live music and just personally wanted, wanting to do it myself. Yeah, what it, yeah, what about you go? Oh, man, basically, uh, always been into music, always been into the heavier side of things. Uh, I ran with a bad crowd in high school and got kicked out, so I found myself wondering, you know, what I was going to do. So I just went and studied music, man, and met the best best bands over there. You know, met my boys that I play in bands with now. We all became best mates and started playing in bands through that way, man. Just meeting people through studying music, and it was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. Hell yeah, that's cool. Is there is there a particular big time artist that's ever come into town that you guys saw and like their live show just completely changed everything for you? Like you're like, wow, I, I need to step up a little bit. I, I want to do what they're doing. Is there like a, a wow moment for a major artist of a show that you've seen or they did something live that you hadn't seen before? Oh. Uh. We do a few shows lately, I suppose. But uh, maybe probably because like Khan, they were pretty good live. Yeah. Like, after watching that, like, I'm pretty sure we can all agree. Yeah. That, like, that was a great yeah. show. That was like that was some next level stuff. You know, we saw that. Kubra that Khan. Pretty, that was a cool shoot. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's see if we can stump you on the Simpsons trivia in one of the early older episodes. Homer sacrifices something. To buy Lisa her saxophone. What does Homer obtain that he does not want to give up, but he sacrifices it to make sure that she has her saxophone in one of the early, early episodes? I'll, I'll fucking start by that. Kind of remember it, but like, not fully really remember it. <laughs> I'll give you a slight hint. It's something you would find inside of 99% of people's houses. Or right next to their house. If that helps. It doesn't seem like it's helping. Go ahead and get that hot sauce going, gentlemen. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have us up. No worries. Let's jam, uh, let's jam the new version of Snake Demeanor. It's just good vibes all all day on that song. Snake demeanor. What what does snake demeanor mean from a from a lyrical perspective? Well, like a fuck you to those fucking shit mates, you know. Like those um ones that and they're there and then um stab you in the back, you know. Like just the snake friends out there and yeah, I guess it's just. That's just uh, just where it sort of came from, like particularly at the time of writing it, it's like very really, like young teenage angry mind of mine when I wrote it a few years ago now. Yeah, it's just yeah, all that teenage angst come out. <laughs> I feel you. Do you have any do you have any interesting vocal warm up techniques? Or any rituals or anything you do before like let's say you're going to the studio today? Versus just a normal practice, is there anything unusual you would do to like warm up? <laughs> well, um, if I if I'm going to see her alone, I'll put on um, there's this guy on Spotify called Bob Tasman Smith. I'll just um, sing along to his warm up techniques. It's just um, it, it sounds stupid to other people just hear it because it's just that weird sounds, but like. Maybe a bit more than that. <laughs> yeah, it, and it opens up your throat and it like relaxes it and gets it prepared for all the screaming and stuff. I would imagine. Hell yeah, very cool, very cool. Let's see. I probably shoot you off one more Simpsons question, but uh, oh, no, I probably need another minute or two. Let's see. <laughs> All right, all right. Within, within, we'll say within five. Within five, in in the episode Homer, which shows that uh, Homer is actually a genius, but he stuck crayons up his nose, and he got one stuck 
on his brain, which makes him as smart as he is today. I don't know if you've seen that episode. How many crayons were stuck up his nose in total? Ooh. Within five, so it's a decent amount. Just shoot off a random, a random number guess. Yeah, we're gonna go four. Four, unfortunately, is also incorrect. <laughs> the I answer is is sixteen. He had sixteen what? crayons stuck up his nose, and when they remove the final one, his IQ immediately increases by fifty points. Is what it says. I remember that episode. Yeah. That was a kind of funny one. <laughs> Gentlemen, I know you said you're doing you're doing some some uh, when the studio is built in your house, Riley. You said that uh, you're gonna have a bunch of new EP stuff in the works. Uh, what is what is the band's goals for 2023? Obviously, get that music out, finish the studio, but beyond that, what is a couple of of goals that Remy Grassa has by this time next year? If we were to do like a follow up, oh, I'd like to say next year we can release our music and hopefully go on some Australian live tours and um just just get out there and play with as many bands as possible, meet as many new people as possible and just, just live it up, you know, just travel as much as we can and so so going on the nice. going on tour is like absolutely one of the main goals, like getting up and down the coast of Australia, maybe going to all the way up to Perth and back down. Yeah, that's it, man. That's the dream for us. So we want to get the set together at the moment, since obviously I've joined the band, we've been getting tight and trying to get, you know, get the set list right. We want to, by this time next year, be doing a tour or close to, you know, that's the, that's the goal. Hell yeah, well, I am rooting for you guys on that one. Uh, is there is there any other additional plugs you guys want to throw out? Obviously, we have the YouTube pulled up right here. If you just search Remy Grassa, <laughs> it, it pops right up. Please support them. Hit the subscribe button. But is there any other social media things that you want to toss out? Like, follow us at this, this, this. Because I know it's at the Remy Grassa on Facebook, correct? Yeah. What, what, is their, uh, what does your band name mean? I never asked you that. What does your band name mean? Like, how did you come up with that one? <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, it's, well, it's Spanish, obviously, um, but it, it means fat Remy, so <laughs> I don't know what, um, you'll take from that, but, um, what well, that. It means flat earth? It means flat earth? Is that what you said? No, it means like fat rim shot, like fat Remy of the kind. Oh, I, I get what I get what they mean. Yeah, so it's a total stoner stoner tag. Smoke weed every day. Yeah. Okay, cool. I dig it. I did not know that. I'm, I'm gaining some knowledge this interview. Hell yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Metallic, we got time for a, a couple more. Uh, rattle off one more question for him. Um. Uh, so BG asked if you were to go anywhere, if you were to work with any band. What band would it be? Like out of the feature, as a feature, or them like on the road with them? On the road, and or as a feature, you can have you can answer both. Oh man! Well, I'd say like my dream band, like that I'd always want to play with or something, would be probably like Alexis on Fire. It's I don't know. I've listened. They've always been one of my favorites. So definitely that that'd be the band for me. Mm. I'm yeah. a big Deftones fan, man. We just saw. Um, we just went to a festival, a local festival up here in Brizzy called Good Things. We saw a bunch of great bands, and Deftones was on there. And did you guys see Father? Did you catch band. Father Deer hand set? No, no, I don't think we did. Oh, you, you guys would dig that, man. Father Deer Hands and you guys would have like a, not a similar sound, but I think you could definitely play together for sure. You would dig that. Uh, are you familiar? Are you familiar with Mood Ring? You said Deftones. No, you said Deftones is one of your favorites. I, yeah, yeah, sure. I would absolutely look up Mood Ring tonight. One word. 
you'll fall in love. They're like literally a Deftones doppelganger. I will do that. Straight. Hell right. yeah. Uh, fellas, we only have time for like one or two more questions. Uh, my first, my first, it's a two part question really, but I asked just about every, everybody we have in the show, this final thing is if you've ever met somebody in within the industry and they gave you advice that just kind of was like an eye opener, made you take your career a little more seriously. Could you share that advice? And secondly, if there ever was a mistake, maybe you were in a band prior to Remy Grassa. What is the worst mistake you ever made as a band that you don't want a band that's just starting up to make? Um, well, I think like the best advice I I got. Uh oh. Uh oh. We lost them. We lost. We lost you guys. Oh. You're sideways, and then we we lost you on. Uh, you said my best advice, and then we lost you. Are we back on? Or? Yeah, you're, yeah. We, we can see you, but it's it's. It, if you turn it sideways, it it should re full screen you. There we go. There you go. We're golden. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, the best advice for for a band that just formed last week. Um. Well, the best advice I got was just. Don't don't sit on your music, you know. Don't don't sit on it for ten years. Just just make it, put it out there, you know. Just get it out there as soon as possible because, you know, it, you're not going to be perfect the first time around. You know, you, you're going to make some mistakes, so just put it out there. You, you're going to learn from it. You're going to know what to do better next time, and it's going to get better and better. So that's the best advice. There. Okay. Same same question for you, sir. Unless you want to answer. Uh, the worst mistake portion of it. Um, I'd say the best advice I've, I've probably been given by a mate of mine would be to just being a guitar player, playing in bands and stuff like that. You tend to want to, um, you know, you tend to want to impress people with your skills and stuff like that. And I've I've learned recently that it's not about how many notes you play; it's the way you play. So, I kind of try to dial back my playing a bit and just really everything into the notes that are there i'd say that's been probably the best advice i've been given both fairly good advice i would say fellas i'm stoked on on the fact that you got the new recordings in they sound solid as hell keep doing your thing i'm excited riley that you're working on the working on the studio so we can get more material to our ears that's awesome gentlemen we appreciate you taking some time out of your out of your morning to do this tell josh we said happy birthday please and uh, give yeah. that man some Pedialyte or something so we can get him back on his feet. But uh, <laughs> cheers, fellas. Thank yeah. you so much for doing this. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have, awesome. a, have a fantastic morning, day, and afternoon. Remy Grasso! Give me a hell yeah! Cheers, boys. Thank you. Thank you.